In this lecture, we will try and see why two indifference curves cannot intersect. So I want to prove that two indifference curves cannot intersect. To prove this, what we will do is we will try and Assume the counter of it. So let's assume that two indifference curves are in fact intersecting with each other. So, you know, I'm assuming that two indifference curves are intersecting with each other. If I assume that two indifference curves are intersecting with each other, what do you think will happen? Let's see the following. So let's say that I go ahead and I draw my indifference curves. This is my good X, good Y. This is indifference curve one and I'm going to draw another indifference curve and this is indifference curve two. Now I'm going to take three points. Let's take point A, B and just a point above B which is going to be C. I'm going to use various assumptions that we have considered and various theorems that we have considered. So let's consider what happens on indifference curve one. Now, by the definition of indifference curve, we know that points that are actually, what do I mean by points? I mean bundles. So I know that bundles that are there on the same indifference curve provide the same level of utility. Right? So if they provide the same level of utility, what are the points that are on the same indifference curve? On IC1, I have point A and C. So because A and C lie on IC1, the utility that you should get from A should be equal to the utility that you get from C. In other words, you should have A and C indifferent to each other. This is the first thing. Now, I am going to consider further and I'm going to consider indifference curve 2. So in IC2, I know that A and B lie on IC2. And since A and B lie on the same indifference curve, the utility that you get from A should be equal to the utility that you get from B. Or in other terms, you should be indifferent between A and B because they lie on the same indifference curve IC2. Now, let's say that this is my equation one. And let's say that this is my equation two. I'm going to use the property of transitivity. And I know from transitivity that because utility from A is equal to utility from C, this is given by equation one, and utility of A is also equal to utility from B, this is given by equation two. Therefore, 
from 1 and 2 using the property of transitivity i know that utility from b should be equal to utility from c or in other terms i know that i should be indifferent between b and c this is the thing that is coming from transitivity now go back to the diagram once and notice that b and c have the same level of good one or good x so they have the same level of good x say x1 but b has lesser amount of good y say y1 whereas c has more amount of good y say y2 so i know that bundle b is x1 comma y1 and bundle c is x1 comma y2 and i know that from monotonicity so what's what does monotonicity tells me so monotonicity tells me that more is preferred and from this concept that more is preferred i know that the utility that i should get from c should be more than the utility that I get from B because C has more of good Y than B and both of them have the same amount of good X. So they have the same amount of good X but C has more of good Y. So clearly from monotonicity, the utility from C should be greater than the utility from B. So I can write from monotonicity. But from transitivity that I just did in the previous uh, page, from transitivity, I know that the utility of C is equal to utility from B. Now, these two statements are actually contradictory, right? You cannot have two things equal and one greater than the other at the same time. So because the, these two things are contradictory to each other, you have achieved a contradiction. Therefore, the initial, and you know, because you've achieved a contradiction, the initial assumption that you started with is a wrong assumption. So I know from this that two indifference curves cannot intersect. Because when I assumed that they intersect, I reach to a contradiction. 